ladies and gents, welcome to War Thunder with Mags. Today I'm going to do a little bit of a uh, aircraft review for you. Uh, it seems a few people liked my Red Heat video on the K Air Cobra. So I'll do a bit of run down on my current toy that I'm using to grind up a bit of cash and to get me into US jets. That's the BTD-1 Destroyer. Now I made a few mentions about this in my uh, XP and Premium Mechanics video. I use this plane as an example with its 100-100 reward rate. Now that reward is only gifted to it in Arcade. This aircraft in particular I advise heavily on using it mainly in Historical. The reward it's able to generate for you, the money and income it can pull in and just its general effectiveness it's far better suited for Historical Battles. In Arcade, well in Arcade you can sort of use it like a fighter I guess, but it's a bad fighter. As a ground target strike aircraft, it's great, but I feel you really will be wasting the potential. And that potential is shown by doing this. Go over the research tree, click historical battles over there, you know, straight away, it's a 500% reward. So when this plane is not maxed out, it gets an X5 bonus from not having its mastery bar full, and then the total XP generated by that is then multiplied by 5 again. It can just drag in huge amounts for doing very 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 little work and it is very effective at what it does. Now there is a few things to note on this. This is as you can clearly see naval bomber torpedo bomber which means it suffers exactly the same problems that um, a ground attack aircraft and heavy fighters have when dropping bombs. Um, I'd like your attackers, your, your heavy fighters, light fighters, anything to carry a bomb load that isn't actually designated as a light, medium or heavy bomber. And that is it does not get a ground target indicator in front of the aircraft when you are flying it in historical mode. So you have to dive bomb with this as it was intended to be used. Anyways, enough talking here, we'll talk about more about the aircraft in a moment once we're in a match. As you can see here, my standard historical loadout, 2,000 pounders, 600 meter gun convergence, and 45 minutes of fuel. The 45 minutes is the minimum fuel time that you can set this aircraft. It doesn't go any load up lower. When you're first learning to dive bomb, I recommend using the 2,000 pounder, single bomb. Uh, you don't get to crack it through targets, but uh, the larger blast radius does make it easier to learn how to effectively strike a target when you've got no indicator for it, to learn how to drop the bombs effectively. Um, I'm a little bit better at it now, so I've gone to two 1000 so I can try and basically take on two pillboxes, and that's all those bombs are useful. One pillbox, each bomb, and I'll show you why soon. Now, this 600 meter convergence, obviously this aircraft got upgraded it, it's an upgraded version of the, the Avenger dive bomber, effectively, is what it was designed to. It never saw battle in World War II, it came along too late, and the war ended when the first orders and shipments of these aircraft were being delivered. Now, so, part of its armament upgrades was 220mm cannons, which makes it ridiculously good at striking ground. Showed a few moments ago, just having a look around the inside of the cockpit, you'll notice it doesn't have particularly good rear view despite having this big glass canopy. The reason why it has so much glass on top is the original design of this aircraft actually had a rear gunner using a remote system very similar to what was used in the uh, 410, uh, the ME 410s with the twin turrets on the side using a remote in the center to guide them. The original design intended this to have two turrets, each with two 50 caliber machine guns mounted where the fuselage air brakes are actually mounted now. All the glass is armoured, the panel that is blocking your view is armoured, so cockpit kills from behind are actually very hard to get in this aircraft, which is good. A downside to cockpit hits, however, is underneath that flat panel that acts as like, I guess, suppose the parcel shelf behind the pilot, behind the armoured plate that makes up the back of the seat, is an extra fuel tank. So if somebody does decide to go for your cockpit, there is a chance they will light you up. This is, isn't a particularly amazing battle. Um, I don't get a chance to do a lot for reasons you'll see. And as a general rule, if you're a person who likes to rack up huge amounts of kills and rock the battle, 
this is an aircraft that you're not going to enjoy that much. Um, you can do it if you get the right team. Unfortunately, most of the time you will get horrible, horrible teams in this aircraft. As you can see, this, this matchmaker has decided to give, it, uh, give us a lineup where two thirds of the aircraft are B-25s and all the fighters are cutting grass. I don't know why it happens, it just does. So anyway, here's how to dive bomb in a destroyer. First go for your initial dive down, you see I'm still running the wet, I'm heading towards 700 kilometers an hour. Now the dive brakes in this aircraft are amazing, so you don't have to worry about overspeed. I'm just getting my angles right, then I drop into a steeper dive, deploy the air, air brakes, and you can see how huge they are. Turn the weapon off, but keep the throttle at 100%, and you see it's already slowed me down 200 kilometers an hour. I release the bomb a little high, and miss. Breaking the air brakes, immediately start going for ground targets. Continue on. You haven't got a lot of time to survive, so you've got to do what you can fast. At slow to medium speeds, this craft is incredibly maneuverable, and it carries huge amounts of lift. So you see, I'm going very close to the ground here but I'm not running the risk of hitting. The biggest issue you'll have in this aircraft is actually getting the nose down. It generates so much lift, you usually have to tear the, uh, tap the air brakes to get it to dip the nose enough to put the guns on the ground. Now, it can operate as a fighter when it needs to. It's not very good at it, you usually only get one shot. Here, this 410 is going after our B-25. I saw an opportunity to save him. Fire a burst, take off the elevators is going down, turn in, look for new ground targets. You'll notice I flooded the air brakes a lot in this plane. Uh, why leaving the weapon on or the throttles at near 100%? Tapping the air brakes will actually cause the plane to swing around very rapidly so you can pick up new targets and achieve tight turns without... Uh, interestingly enough, using the air brakes you'll actually lose less airspeed than dropping the throttle and deploying the combat flaps in order to turn. So four targets down, and that's what you'll encounter a lot of there. That was a 190 pilot, which was a wonderful idea to ram kill me. Uh, didn't anticipate that this is a five-ton aircraft that is the same size or larger than a Corsair, and it cost him his plane. So four ground kills, one air kill, 50,000 credits, 50,000 experience, and eight minutes in battle. So you can imagine what happens when you start getting 13 and 14 ground kill runs in this plane. You can rack up huge amounts of experience. Now, unfortunately, in that mission, I failed to hit the pillbox in my dive. So I'm gonna show you a short clip, of me going in and doing it the right way, and to see why I carry those two bombs and why pillboxes should always be your first target in this plane. One, well, firstly, they're important to destroy and they are often left alone because it does require heavy munitions to take them out. But here we go, beginning the dive, same as before, shallow, weapon still on, gaining speed. Increase the angle of attack, wep off. Just make fine adjustments. Go a little bit lower this time, air brakes at the last second, accelerate down to 500 on the drop for the pull up, release the bomb, and yes, that was 16,000 XP in a single shot. The Destroyer, what do I think of it? It's a license to print XP for the US nation, and it's capable of printing money like it's working for the mob. It's an amazing aircraft that for some reason the matchmaker seems to give the short end of the stick when it comes to uh, a team groupings on a regular basis. I'm not sure why, but it's very, very, very rare to find good teams in this particular plane. It may be something to do with the level, I don't know. But overall, the plane is great. It does exactly what it needs to do. It's capable of defending itself. It's heavily armoured. It's heavily armed, its ability to dive and its control with the dive brakes is incredible. I apologize for not being able to show you any better matches than this. Unfortunately, the last three days I work as a DJ and the last three days I've been very busy with gigs over the weekend down here, so I haven't had a time to get a lot of foot footage. This is just what I've been able to put together very, very, very early in the Monday morning. 
That said, I hope this video has given you some indication of the capabilities of the aircraft. If you're looking for a T10 Premium to grind US national experience in and make some money, I thoroughly recommend this one. It is a, a great little plane and I'm having a lot of fun learning to dive bomb in it and to operate it in historicals. It is, it is great fun. I will hopefully have some better footage of this aircraft to put up uh, at a bit later date, maybe some full matches in it where I've done pretty well. Uh, my footage count is running a little bit low, but I'll be sure to fix that up. Well, time to bring this video to an end. Please, if you enjoyed the video, you found it informative, you liked it, please click the like button if you do. If you didn't, please downvote it. Uh, feel free to leave me messages in the comments. I will respond and fly safe.